This is the American Law Journal. Generic drugs, yes, they're cheaper than brand names, probably just as safe, but if one injures you, don't count on the courts to help you out. Good evening, I'm Christopher Naughton. Welcome to the American Law Journal. Do you have less legal protection if you're harmed by a generic drug versus a brand name drug? Some people are finding out the hard way. Gina Passarella with the Legal Intelligencer reports. Generic drugs are king. About 80% of all prescriptions in America are now generics. But if you take one over a brand name drug, you could be playing without a safety net. Take the highly publicized case of Diana Levine, a musician who had her hand and forearm amputated because she was injected with an anti-nausea drug causing gangrene. She sued the drug maker, Wyeth Pharmaceuticals, for failure to warn about the risks of injecting the drug. Her case went to the U.S. Supreme Court, and she won $6.8 million. Compare that to Debbie Shork, a deli worker from Indiana who had her hand amputated after a nurse injected her with the same drug. Her case was thrown out. The difference? Ms. Levine had been given the brand name drug Phenergan. Ms. Shork received the generic version of the drug. So why the distinction between a brand name and a generic when they're really the same drug? The Supreme Court in June of 2011 decided the Mensing case and said generic drug manufacturers don't have a duty to warn. They don't have to do anything more than what the brand companies did. So it's had a tremendous impact uh, on the product liability litigation against generic drug companies. And it really was sort of unforeseen. Uh, I think it was uh, totally unexpected by the generic drug industry uh, and certainly uh, unexpected by plaintiff's counsel. In the 5-4 to four Mensing decision, the Supreme Court said the FDA makes generic manufacturers follow the exact same label warnings as the brand name drug. Since generics are not the authors of the label, they can't be held liable for a failure to warn. To Eisenberg, that confounds courts and consumers. So, in the law, there is some sort of disconnect that courts are struggling with, and they're having a difficult time saying to patients and lawyers, you can't, you, you're without a remedy. But some courts are finding a remedy in California, Alabama, and in New Hampshire. That's where the story of Karen Bartlett started. Um, generic drugs and brand name drugs should be um, equal. Her fate now rests with the U.S. Supreme Court. Yeah, the bar of the case is an unusual decision. Uh, a woman took a, a, a drug, an anti-inflammatory drug called Solendac, and suffered an extreme allergic reaction, uh, almost died. A tragic case. A jury uh, awarded her $21 million drugs, on the theory uh, of a design defect. Design defect. That's how consumers are winning. Not a faulty label or failure to warn. But not so fast. So I think the prospects of Bartlett's standing are pretty slim at this point. The U.S. Supreme Court expressed skepticism when it heard the Bartlett case argued before it this spring. And the jury decides all of this, huh? That's correct, Justice. That's wonderful. Well, the uh, FTC... 12, 12 tried men and few uh, and true decide for the whole state what the, what the cost-benefit analysis is for a, a, a very uh, novel uh, drug that uh, unquestionably has some uh, uh, deleterious effects but also can save some lives. Either way, this issue isn't going away. Four generic drug cases have been addressed by the U.S. Supreme Court in less than two years. And on top of the injury matter, there are complex business and patent questions that still need to be answered. As courts grapple with how to tackle these legal questions, plaintiff's lawyers are looking at how to get their clients relief. That inevitably means more litigation. The takeaway? Expect generic drug cases to have a home before the high court for years to come. For the American Law Journal, I'm Gina Passarella.